You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So I'm listening to the House Oversight Committee, the weaponization of our Department of Justice, and it is more likely that Joe Biden and the Biden family are closer to David Weiss than Donald Trump. So Democrats and the Pravda media are trying to build this narrative that since Weiss was appointed by Trump, then there can't possibly be any conflicts of interest or improprieties or corruption. Well, in the state of Delaware, the senators nominate the candidate for the appointment of U.S. attorney. So in Delaware, the two senators nominate and give the blessings for the person that is to be appointed by the president as U.S. attorney. Okay? So David Weiss had the blessings from the two senators of Delaware, Chris Coons, and Tom Carper, and both of them were Democrats. So how does Joe Biden feel about Chris Coons and Tom Carper? Because obviously, there's the senators of Delaware. Joe Biden was a senator of Delaware. I mean, that's, that's a conflict of interest right there, don't you think? And so, well, here is what, um, here's what Joe Biden said about Chris Coons, and this is per the New York Times headline. It's not very hard to find this stuff. So per New York Times headline, It says, meet Chris Coons, the president's extra eyes and ears in the Senate. Hmm. So I guess we know that Joe Biden and Chris Coons have a pretty good relationship. And here's what Joe Biden said about Tom Carper. So Tom Carper is not running for re-election in 2024. And so Joe Biden seen fit to send him on his way with a nice message from the WhiteHouse.gov webpage. And it says, for nearly 50 years, I've had the privilege of calling Tom Carper my friend, my trusted colleague, and my elected representative. Over the years, Tom and I often rode the train together, getting to Washington early in the morning and back to Wilmington late at night. Hmm. Sounds like he had a pretty good relationship with Tom Carper. So did Joe Biden have any input in nominating David Weiss as U.S. attorney? I don't know. I don't see why not. You mean to tell me Chris Coons... Tom Carper and Joe Biden didn't talk about who they were going to be nominating as U.S. attorney for Delaware. All three of them were senators for Delaware. Of course they did, folks. Of course they did. And so do you, does anybody really think that these two Democrats would nominate a Trump supporter to be U.S. attorney? Do Democrats honestly think that the American people are supposed to believe that the two Democrat senators that are really close to Joe Biden are going to nominate a staunch conservative, a MAGA-supporting conservative as U.S. attorney for Delaware. This is what they want you to believe. This is the first talking point they'll throw out there when talking about the, the obvious conflict of interest in appointing David Weiss to investigate Joe Biden's son and the Biden crime family. And so, like I said, it is more likely that Joe Biden personally knows David Weiss than Donald Trump. Like a lot of people, like the Pravda media wants you to think like David Weiss went on golf outings and had dinner with Donald Trump, when all reality, it is more likely that David Weiss knows Joe Biden personally on a personal level than Donald Trump. I'm just throwing that out there. So because we got to squash this this narrative that because David Weiss was appointed by Donald Trump, that he can't possibly be corrupted and he can't possibly be running a protection racket for the Biden family. (laughs) Folks, Delaware is small. Delaware is a small state. So Joe Biden, Chris Coons, Tom Carper, David Weiss probably all know each other because they're all from Delaware. You starting to see the connections here? David Weiss allowed the statute of limitations to expire on Hunter Biden. And this was confirmed by the two IRS whistleblowers. So imagine that. So David Weiss who most likely knows Joe Biden on a personal level, that was nominated by Tom Carper and Chris Coons, the Democrats of Delaware, that was investigating Hunter Biden, who's also from Delaware, 
allowed the statute of limitations to expire. So allowed five, six, seven years to pass so that the statute of limitations could expire on all the crimes committed by Hunter Biden purposely. In November of 2022, the statute of limitations was set to expire for the 2014 and 2015 charges in D.C., which included the 2014 felonies for the attempt to evade or defeat tax and fraud or false statement regarding Burisma income earned by Hunter Biden in those years. The statute of limitations had been extended through a tolling agreement with Hunter Biden's defense counsel, and they were willing to extend it past November 2022. Weiss allowed those to expire. So there you go. And it wasn't just Weiss that allowed the statute of limitations to expire. David Weiss said that he was obstructed by USAG Wolf. And this is, a, this is what the whistleblower said about U.S. Attorney General Wolf. Here, check this out. You also testified that Assistant United States Attorney Leslie Wolf told you that you would get into hot water if interviewed the president's grandchildren. In other cases that you've worked over your career, have you ever had a prosecutor tell you that you couldn't interview a relevant witness? So there, there, there are certain things that come into whether we talk to a witness or not. So if they're an attorney, if there is some special situation that might come up that might cause caution to interviewing that witness, but I've never been told that we couldn't approach someone to interview them as a part of an investigation. And so all this, this whole damn thing, to anybody, to any rational, reasonable person, can see the obvious conflicts of interest. This ginormous web of just connections and nepotism in the state of Delaware and all these attorneys and U.S. attorneys, and it's all being, it's all being led by Attorney General Merrick Garland. And so... <laughs> Merrick Garland appoints David Weiss to this new investigation of Hunter Biden after David Weiss just allowed the statute of limitations to expire. That's not a conflict of interest. No, nothing seems improper there, folks, right? There's no corruption there. It's unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. And so I want to go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and read the 28 CFR section 600.3, the qualifications of the special counsel. And we have done this before in previous episodes, but I want to make sure this particular segment gets out there so that people can stop using this talking point that Donald Trump appointed David Weiss. So therefore, David Weiss is not corrupted and is not running a protection racket for the Bidens. OK, because that is what that's the talking point they're using because they think the American people are stupid. The American people are not dumb. They see all the corruption here, this giant swamp of corruption between the attorneys in Delaware and the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland and Joe Biden and his family. People see it. People are not dumb. These, this is the biggest mistake these people make all the time is they think the American people are dumb. And so 28 CFR section 600.3, the qualifications of the special counsel. This is from Cornell Law School, the Legal Information Institute. So subsection A, an individual named as special counsel shall be a lawyer with a reputation for integrity and impartial decision making and with appropriate experience to ensure both that the investigation will be conducted ably, expeditiously and thoroughly and that investigative and prosecutorial decisions will be supported by an informed understanding of the criminal law and Department of Justice policies. So does anybody think that David Weiss is, does anybody think David Weiss has integrity? I don't know. Just look at that first plea deal that they tried getting through. Does anybody think that David Weiss is impartial in his decision making? I don't know. He allowed the statute of limitations to expire on purpose. So let's continue. The special counsel shall be selected from outside of the United States government. Special counsels shall agree that their responsibilities as special counsel shall take first precedent in their professional lives, and it may be necessary to devote their full time to the investigation depending on its complexity and the stage of the investigation. I'm just going to say it again. He allowed the statute of limitations to expire on purpose allowing Hunter Biden to get away with a lot of crimes. And in fact, Hunter Biden still owes hundreds of thousands of dollars to the IRS. He just pocketed it. 
He just got away without having to pay it. So he had a, there was 125000 There's hundreds of thousands of dollars that Hunter Biden didn't pay in taxes. And because this guy, David Weiss, allowed the statute of limitations to expire, he just got the pocket the money. Now, I want any of my listeners to try that and see what happens. And no, don't, don't, because you will get arrested. You will not be forwarded the hospitality of U.S. Attorney David Weiss. You will not be forwarded the hospitality of Attorney General Merrick Garland. They will not run a protection racket for you. This type of behavior is only for the Bidens. This type of behavior is only for politicians and their corrupt families. The American people will never get away with what Hunter Biden got away with. And so here's subsection B. The attorney general shall consult with the assistant attorney general for administration to ensure an appropriate method of appointment and to assure that a special counsel undergoes an appropriate background investigation and a detailed review of ethics and conflicts of interest issues. So it's clear and obvious that David Weiss has really, really questionable ethics in regards to allowing statute of limitations to expire on the person you're investigating for years and doing it on purpose. And then per subsection B of 28 CFR, appointing a special counsel qualifications, there's supposed to be an investigation, a detailed review of any conflicts of interest issues. <laughs> I mean, nobody sees the obvious conflict of interest between David Weiss being from Delaware being nominated by two Delaware senators, and the person he's investigating's father was the senator of Delaware. No conflicts of interest there. This is the type of thing they want you to believe. Folks, do not believe this BS. Donald Trump does not know David Weiss the way that Joe Biden knows David Weiss. Okay? It is more likely that Joe Biden and the entire Biden family are closer to David Weiss than Donald Trump. It is the conflict of interest is in your face. And we're not even going to go into the law firm where Bo Biden worked and all the special, all the conflicts of interest there. So out of all the lawyers in the entire country that Merrick Garland could have appointed to investigate Hunter Biden, he picks the guy that allowed the statute of limitations to expire. He picked David Weiss. That's not an appearance of improprieties. That's not a conflict of interest. Folks, it is so corrupt. It is so in your face, it's not even funny. Like, it, it, it is so corrupt that it hurts. <laughs> it is so stupid that these people think that this looks on the up and up. And, and it's, it is incredible. It, what's even more incredible is they think that we're stupid. They think the American people can't see this obvious conflict of interest. It took me five minutes to get the information on how David Weiss was nominated, who nominated him, and the entire backstory of where they're all from. They're all from the state of Delaware. All of them. Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Tom Carper, Chris Coons, David Weiss. I mean, my God, man. And so out of all the attorneys, they pick David Weiss. No, no, no. Come on, man. Come on. Then, and not only that, but is a direct violation of the Department of Justice's own code of conduct. They're violating their own rules. This is a common theme from this Department of Justice, this obvious weaponized and politicized part Department of Justice, is they keep violating their own rules when it comes to the appointment of special counsels, when it comes to the appearance of impropriety. The whole damn thing is corrupt. They're openly violating their own Department of Justice rules of ethics and conduct. And you can look these rules up yourself. I'm looking at them as they're violating them. And they just do it right in the open as if nobody can see it. The problem is, is there's no accountability. Nobody who is trying to hold these people accountable, who is trying to hold David Weiss accountable for allowing the statute of limitations to expire. Nobody. And in fact, you can't even question him about it now because Merrick Garland appointed him as special counsel. That was on purpose. That was on purpose so that David Weiss cannot be questioned about an ongoing investigation. And in fact, in the oversight hearing, Attorney General already uses that card. That's one of the first cards he throws out. Oh, I can't talk about an ongoing investigation between David Weiss and Hunter Biden. Everyone knows they picked the gun charges to indict Hunter Biden with so that it doesn't implicate Joe Biden, his dad. 
everybody can see that this entire damn scandal, this entire damn conspiracy is all being orchestrated to protect Joe Biden and his run for president and to kneecap and destroy Joe Biden's political opposition. And all of it is on the behest of Joe Biden mobilizing his Department of Justice. And you can sit there and deny that he's mobilizing his Department of Justice. You can deny it all you want. But CNN, the guy that released the article saying that Joe Biden needs to just retire and ride off into the sunset, he even says it out loud. These people openly admit that Joe Biden is mobilizing his Department of Justice. And I got some audio to prove it. Here's this guy, Ignatius, the guy that wrote that that freaking hit piece of Joe Biden in order to send the bat signal that Joe Biden needs to drop out of the race. Here is Ignatius talking about Joe Biden mobilizing the Department of Justice to kneecap Donald Trump. Here, check this out. Um, So, David, what are you really saying here? Because if you look at Biden's track record and the fact that he has beaten Trump, I don't know why you would question his ability to beat him again. Um, There are other presidents who are later in years, including uh, the Republican presumptive nominee. Is this really about Kamala Harris? I admire many things that President Biden has done in domestic and foreign policy. I do think that that legacy and at the center of his uh, legacy is the fact that he that he stopped Trump. He stopped him in 2020. He stopped Trump uh, supporters in the midterm elections. Uh, He's mobilized the the Justice Department uh, that is now bringing uh, Trump to accountability. Uh, He's mobilized the the Justice Department. Uh, He's mobilized the the Justice Department. And so there you go. So for all the people that think Joe Biden has nothing to do with the Department of Justice and the way that these investigations are being thrown out and the way that these judges are handling these cases, it's all orchestrated by the executive branch. It's all being orchestrated by the Biden administration. Joe Biden is the one that signed off removing executive privilege from Donald Trump. So no one can sit there and say that Joe Biden doesn't have anything to do with this that the Department of Justice is doing all this independently because Joe Biden is the one that knocked that first domino down by removing the executive privilege from his opponent so that they could start all these investigations. He's the one who kicked it off. And there was a judge that approved it and then retired. I'm telling you, folks, it is all so blatant, in your face, corrupt. And everybody can see it. You go on TikTok, you go on, you go out there on the streets and you talk to people. They will tell you that what is happening right now is the weaponization of our justice system, of our government institutions, in order to interfere in our presidential election in 2024. That is what this is. Everybody sees it. Everybody knows it's happening. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. All they're doing now is playing word games. All they're doing now is playing hide the ball. It's a, it's a constant catch-up game. It's a constant, it's lawfare is what it is. It is legal lawfare. This is how, this is the true fight, the true battle, when you have the weaponization of the law, the weaponization of the justice system. This justice system has officially been politicized. It has been weaponized against its political opponents to kneecap and destroy its political opponents and cover up for their preferred candidate or to cover up for their political friends, for their team. It's, it's so blatant in your face, obvious. I mean, it's like I said, we just re- I just read you the the subsection for the qualification of a special counsel and attorney Merrick, attorney Garland, attorney general Garland is just violating all of it. And that's not even getting into Jack Smith. What Jack Smith is doing is apparent. Out of all the people that they could appointed, they pick the guy that is known for destroying people's lives for political purposes. They choose the, I mean, the, and he was asked about this. I haven't got audio from the House Oversight Committee yet. I'm going to be getting that tonight um, when they're finished, when it's over. But I've been watching it all day. But to sit there and say that Jack Smith was, was the proper guy to appoint is just ludicrous. It is ludicrous. The guy has an awful record. In fact, his, he is known for weaponizing and bludgeoning political opponents. 
by using lawfare. He has been rebuked by the Supreme Court of the United States. Chief Justice John Roberts came out specifically on Jack Smith, and that's exactly what the, one of the House Oversight Committee members says. The guy is known for going after political opponents. He, and, and he does it on purpose. He, he files frivolous charges knowing that they're going to get appealed in the Supreme Court. But that's not what the goal is. The goal is to kneecap, is to, is, they know all these cases are going to get appealed in the Supreme Court, but they're doing it anyways to interfere. They're doing it anyways to interfere in our elections. That is what they're doing. They, they, he knows none of these cases are going to go anywhere. You can't sit there and tell me, and, it, and mind you, all of it's being, it's the same mindset by all these people. Judge Chutkin, who should be recusing herself, but I digress on that. We'll talk about that another time. But you can't allow Jack Smith to have two and a half years to prepare a case and then give the defendant five, six months to build a defense on a unprecedented, super complex case like the one we're watching in D.C. You're going to give him six months? Folks, everybody can see what this is, but they're doing it anyways. Do not let these people destroy our justice system. The American people need to stand up and say enough is enough. Write the Supreme Court. Write Chief Justice John Roberts. So I urge my listeners to write the Supreme Court. Let these people know how you feel. Be polite. Be as professional as you can. Remember, you are writing the highest court of the land. And just be open-minded with them. Let them know how you feel. The public needs to get involved in these matters. You know, it's not up to just Judge Chutkin the outcome and how the case is deliberated. This judge needs to take a, a proper consensus of the public as well. That is how complex this case is. That's how big it is. And she only gave the defense five months to prepare a defense against the most consequential, the most complex case in our lifetimes, possibly even in this country's history. And so this is what concerns me when I see a, the oversight hearing like this and I just wanted to I wanted to call out the prob the media for this ridiculous talking point that Donald Trump appointed David Weiss. And so therefore, there can't possibly be any corruption or malfeasance in the special counsel David Weiss's investigations. It is clear and obvious, folks, there is major conflicts of interest. There is obvious appearances of improprieties. Every single guardrail that has been put in place in our justice system is being mowed down in the name of getting Donald Trump. They are using the pure hatred of Donald Trump to steamroll over the guardrails put in place to protect people. And that is exactly what's happening. And so, A.G. Garland, it's unfortunate that nothing's going to happen with this. But the only thing the American people can do is vote. That is it. That is the one thing the founders gave all of us. And they gave all of us one, just one, no matter how rich you are, no matter how powerful you are, everybody has one. And one is enough for everybody, just so long as everybody comes together and unites and gets this country back on track. I've said this a lot. What's so great about the United States is Winston Churchill mentioned something about this. He had a speech discussing this too. What he said, and I'm paraphrasing, what's so great about the United States of America is that every time it seems as if the United States is about ready to go off a cliff, the American people, its democracy and its constitutional republic, keep it from happening. The American people stop it and get it back on track. This is what is amazing about this country. This is exactly what the founders put us here for. This is exactly what the founders built. And this is what they intended the American people to do. Get involved. Get informed with what is going on. You have to get you have to get informed with politics because what we're watching, a democracy, a constitutional republic is only as strong as its virtue of the people. The founding fathers went into great detail with a lot of these laws and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, but all of it was put in place on the grounds that the American people, that there was going to be virtue to hold up these laws. Because without virtue, you have nothing. You have nothing. And so the founders counted on the American people having virtue to hold up these guardrails. Because the Constitution is just a piece of paper. 
the Constitution is only as good as the people that hold it up, is the people that follow it. And what we're watching right now is a clear destruction of almost every single one of our institutions, the justice system being weaponized against the American people, the government being weaponized against the American people, and everybody can see it. Everyone can see the disparate treatment between one another. Everyone can see it, plain sight, except some people are just so blinded by hatred and this long hatred for eight years. They've been so brainwashed that they don't care. They don't see it. They can't see it. They're completely blinded. They have one-way tunnel vision. And so, therefore, everything is justified. The, the ends justify the means. I just wanted to point out this ridiculous talking point by the Pravda media. I'm getting, I'm doing an episode, um, I'm working on material for an episode right now. I'm going to be recording right after this. I'm going to go ahead and edit this and put this out today so people, because it's relevant. Because this is the talking point by the Pravda media. Because I want the American people to know just how David Weiss was nominated to be U.S. attorney. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions, get a hold of me at Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. And um, as always, I'm going to post these articles on my podcast description so you can read the, um, the CFR subsections of the qualifications of special counsels. You could see it in plain sight that the that Attorney General Merrick Garland is violating his own department's rules when, when appointing special counsels. I mean, all the time. They're violating the rules all the time. So I'm going to put that in my podcast description. I'm also going to put the background stories of Chris Coons and Tom Carper and Joe Biden. I have, an, I have articles, the New York Times article for that. So I want you guys to read into this stuff. And remember, get involved. Um, if you got any questions, again, send me an email, stephentorriellashow at gmail.com. And I will talk to you guys here in a little bit. So I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.